Hey guys, this is Zero back. Uh, we're digging right into Astro Empires again. This one is going to be an explanation video. Uh, it's not following my tutorial or starting, uh, which as you, if you've been watching at all, which you probably haven't. My starting is terrible in this game. I mean, I didn't really try. It took way too much time. All that cool stuff. Okay, so to dig into it, how the attack and defense system works in this game. Uh, so you have attack, you have armor, and you have shielding. Those are the three combat stats. Attack is how much damage you deal. Armor is how much damage you can take. Um, and shielding is damage uh, that you take and adds to your effective armor. And what that means is, um, if you have five armor and four attack, and you attack something else with five armor, it's going to have one armor left in that battle. As soon as that battle's over, um, it can be repaired back up to full HP. So, if you were to attack again, you would kill it, uh, unless it's repaired. So you want to have high attack and armor. Uh, obviously, if your armor is higher, like if it's a fighter versus fighter, it's two attack, two defense on each one. If your attack is one level higher, but your defense is the same as the other person's, you're going to kill the fighter, and your fighter will survive, depending on where your armor and attack is. But if your armor and attack are both one level higher, uh, the, your unit will survive, his will die. Shielding adds another element. Um, we're going to hop into the tables. We're going to go to units. Okay, so ultimately the best unit in the game is the fighter. Now the reason for that is is the cost per armor, which we've talked about so many times, I don't want to go into it again. It's really, really good. Five credits for two armor. Leviathan is 200,000 credits for 6,600 armor. So for the same amount of armor in fighters, it would cost like 30 or 40,000. Maybe a little bit more credits. I don't know the exact math. I didn't do it. Sorry. So, the idea is that the most efficient ship, because in every battle that you fight, you'll lose ships, no matter what. Uh, the base premise of the combat system is that you trade one for one. If you attack a fighter army with fighters, you're not actually going to win, because you're going to tie. You're going to lose the same amount of fighters as him, or your technology levels will, will make that very little bit. But you're not just going to be able to stomp him. Whereas if you use fighters to kill bombers, all of a sudden you are doubling your ratio. You're killing two of his bombers for every fighter you're losing, or for per cost. Because one fighter, power two, kills one bomber, armor two. Since a bomber is twice as expensive, if you only use just enough fighters to kill all the bombers, this extra attack doesn't matter. If he has ten bombers and you use ten fighters, that extra attack is just going to bleed out and it won't kill anything. Um, so you now are getting a two-to-one ratio. If we move up to, let's say, cruisers, or let's say frigates, that's 80. So you get closer to like a 10 to 1 ratio instead of like a 2 to 1 ratio, or a 2.1 ratio. So if six fighters cost you 30 credits, can kill a frigate, and a frigate's going to kill six fighters, so 30 credits. So now you're looking at 80 to 30 ratio, which is really good. So why would you build, ever build anything but fighters? Now here's the thing, uh, let's say your shielding, this is unrealistic, but let's say the shield level and your attack level are the same, uh, the shield level of your opponent. Let's say they have a cruiser fleet, okay, so they have 24 power, 24 armor. So 24, so that would take 12 fighters, so that's 60 credits to kill 200 credits. Wrong, because this is where shields play in, and this is what makes any unit over fighter effective. Because realistically, why would you build an ineffective unit? Why would you build? Why would you build not the most efficient unit, which is the fighter? Well, because this cruiser, given an impossible situation where their shielding is the same as your power, uh, a lot of people use heavy cruisers for this, but we're going to use cruisers because the first unit with real shields. Uh, what's going to happen is you can attack this cruiser with a hundred fighters, and it's not going to die. Why? Because these shields, every attack that's made, the shield will absorb. So if two fighters attack this cruiser in one round, or in one fight, the cruiser will absorb both those shots using the shields. Uh, it's not like other games. 
uh, it's kind of a unique, well, not completely unique, but mostly unique to this game, that um, it will completely absorb any attack. Over 1% goes through. So if you attack this cruiser with 1,000 fighters, you know, it would die because those 1,000 fighters doing 1% damage would kill it. Um, no big deal. Which makes, again, the fighter the most efficient unit. Because if somebody has 10,000 cruisers, but you have like 5 million fighters, you can kill them easily while they're only doing 24 damage to your two armor. So you're only going to lose um, 30 credits. Is it 30? Awkward. Um, 12, 60. You're only going to use six, lose 60 credits for every cruiser you kill. Uh, so again, fighters are most efficient, but it's hard to get up the right amount, of, the right numbers. So a lot of people go with frigate because it can attack, it can kill cruisers, battleships, heavy cruisers. Because the shield is what makes other units effective. The Leviathan is a very popular uh, ship in the game because it has 40 shield, which means it can kill carriers, cruisers, and anything below that for zero loss, given the right situation. If there's too many units, you're still going to make a ton of money because you might lose a Leviathan, but that means that you've killed you know, millions of fleet. Um, to do it. So you're going to be really well off. And that's that's the combat mechanic and why different fleet specs are, are good. Uh, I would like to mention that it is better to have all one fleet specialization. Like if you're going heavy cruisers, you should not build cruisers and heavy cruisers. That's the most common example. Because you're using two units that do almost the same thing but differently together. So you're making them less efficient. If it's something the cruiser is going to be good at, you, it's not good for heavy cruisers because they're less efficient. See, if uh, two cruisers is 400, and it has the same stats as a heavy cruiser. So you're spending an extra 100 credits to get the same stats with a little bit more shield. So if it's something that a, tr a cruiser can do well, there's no reason to use a heavy cruiser because you're wasting that extra 100 credits per cruiser. However, if it's something cruisers cannot do well, like fighter sh or shield rate fighters, like we talked about where the fighters won't do damage. That doesn't actually work because usually people's laser or uh, fighter attack level is 30 and shielding is usually 20 to 25. So fighters do still do a decent amount of damage to cruisers. Heavy cruisers though with a shielding of 4 you're always going to be able to um, shield rate fighters. So realistically you're not going to want to have cruisers with your heavy cruisers when you're attacking fighters. So why would you weaken your army by having both? Because that means you have half the amount which means you can make half the strength of a good hit, which means you're going to miss good hits, and you're going to get weaker and weaker over time. Uh, so if you're building heavy cruisers, you want to build heavy cruisers. Fleet carriers right here, as you can see, because those are going to carry fighters with them. They're not a combat ship. They're going to carry fighters to keep the heavy cruisers safe and keep your ratios good. You're going to want recyclers, and you're going to want fighters. And that's going to be it. A lot of people use corvettes and destroyers, but in my opinion, it's not worth the time. Unless you, and Sometimes it just depends on the person. Because what happens is, uh, attacks happen evenly. I hope that makes sense. Attacks happen, happen evenly in the sense that if there's four different units, it will attack evenly over those four different units, assuming there's the same number of each of them. So that means if you have heavy cruisers and something, uh, and let's say there's cruisers in, like, attacking you, they're going to evenly attack your recyclers, um, fleet carriers, fighters and heavy cruisers. So your fighters are going to make your ratios a lot better because we talked about that armor to credits ratio. And that's going to be really good and really efficient for you. Um, I think we've kind of harped on that enough. Uh, so you're going to want to pick a fleet specialization which we'll dig into later. I just want to go over the basis of how combat works. Uh, one more one more tiny important thing for combat is ion ships, ion frigates and ion bombers. Not overly used because they suck. But the premise is is that uh, half of this attack power of the ion ships goes through shields. So if this ion frigate does 14 damage, that means if it attacks a, it does 14 damage, let's say if it attacks a dreadnought which has 20 shield, it will still do 7 damage. However, they are ridiculously more expensive for the same armor. Uh, they're just not efficient uh, at all for any reason. So you wouldn't really want to build them, but that is how those work, is that just 50% of the power goes through the shield instead of 1%. So, eh. But they're expensive and they, like no matter what you kill it's basically going to lose you money because if you kill a Leviathan with Ion Frigates it's going to do so much damage to these and they're so expensive. It's 10 to 1 credits to armor. 
That's stupid. Like, like seriously stupid. So you you don't want to get those. But that's how that works. Um, obviously, when your ships are destroyed, uh, I believe your armor times two is the percentage left over. So if your armor is twenty, then forty percent of that ship is going to be left. Uh, so if you destroy, let's let's go with an even number. Let's go ten. So if you destroy a bomber and their armor is level twenty. That means that there will be shoot awkward four debris in space, which you can pick up with your recyclers, uh, and that's how that works. Now, to I want to show you some examples of combat. I haven't been very good at finding combat, so we're gonna hop over to the forums. We're gonna go to politics and war. We're gonna go to alpha because that's the server way in you. Uh, but yeah, I haven't been very good at combat. Uh, as I explained in my last video, I actually really screwed up my beginning. So we're going to go into this. Um, this was probably not the best way to do this. Let's see. Let's scroll down. Let's go to page 29. Yeah, I'm so bad at this game in every way. Okay, so hopefully there's some good battle reports. Okay, so here we are. Here are some big ones. So here's 2.4 million for 10 million. We want to look at this one. I bet you that's Leviathans. Okay, so here's how Leviathans are good. This is cruisers. There are, at this point, if you have 160 Leviathans, 1,700 heavy cruisers are not that scary. As you can see, they did the most damage. They killed like 13 or something like that. 12. They killed 12. Um, that's not that big a deal when you're killing 10 million fleet. Uh, we can look at the next battle report, and it will just be rape. Because as you can see, Dreadnoughts, these ships here, are the only ones that do damage more than 1% to the Leviathan. So 50,000 cruisers are reduced to uh, the damage of 500 because it's 1%, which means they do practically nothing. So these Leviathans are going to be able to harp on this because they have 90 shield. So they're going to be able to harp on this all day. As you can see, he took 12 losses, which is still only less than a quarter. So he's making triple profit on this, which is insane. Um, whereas if we go back... A second. Uh, how do I do this? Just a second. Uh, I'm gonna have to on full screen. No, no, I don't. Okay, here we go. So we looked at this one. Let's look at this one here. Okay, so this is what was left. This is the second attack. He lost two Leviathans. He killed. Oh gosh, I don't even know. Two hundred sixty thousand fighters, and t over twenty thousand cruisers, and forty thousand corvettes. He killed six million fleet. And only costing four hundred thousand. That's that's ten times profit. That's insane. That is why the Leviathan is good. Now let's see if we can find. Let's see if we can find a fighter one. No, these are all Leviathan. This might be fighters. Okay. Now this is why fighters are good. So she has seven hundred forty thousand fighters in the, against one Leviathan. You would think the Leviathan could harp on it all day. That is not true because 743,000 fighters do enough damage, even though it's only 1%, to kill a Leviathan in one shot. So it's, it cost him seven or 18,000, realistically, to kill 200,000 worth of fleet. So this was really good. This is where fighters are the most efficient. Attacking big ships in huge numbers, you're going to get really, really, really good ratios. This is almost 10 to 1 as well. Um, it's amazing. So it really depends, because we have fighters versus leviathans and leviathans versus, versus fighters. Which is better? Depends on the situation, depends on your choice. That's how combat works. If you have any questions, comments, or rude remarks, leave them in the comments. I will read them. I am excited. I look forward to them. Uh, but that's combat in a nutshell. Remember, guys, play safe, and I will see you later. Uh, random little bonus at the end. Not really bonus, but I'm looking for new games. I have a few that I want to play, but I kind of want to throw in some that I'm not familiar with, just to, just to add that. So I'd like you to uh, comment your favorite game, and I would like to try it out. Uh, I appreciate you all looking, and I'll see you later.